whiny. I love that. Whiny, that's a great act, whiny women's disease. That's how I feel. They many feel about it. But, you know, I, I just want to say there's a live viewer named Elizabeth says that sex is important only when you have a man. Would you agree with what she just posted? Oh, my gosh. No. Uh, sex is important if it's important to you. And that means, you know, we love to say sexual health is just health. And so if you enjoy pleasure, if you enjoy intimacy, if you enjoy orgasm, if you enjoy relaxation, if you enjoy all of those things, sensuality, you deserve that, whether you're alone, whether you're with partners. Um, and it's really, it's what you want. So sexual medicine is, so I'm a sex, I'm a urologist, but I am a sexual medicine trained provider, which means that I take care of all genders and I deal with quality of life issues that are, that deal with sex. So pelvic pain, libido, orgasm, arousal problems. And it's only a problem if you're bothered by it. So if you're sitting there uh, doing a jigsaw puzzle saying, well, I couldn't care less about my sexual health. You do not have a problem. I do not need to fix you. You are not broken. But if you come to my office and you say, gee, Dr. Rubin, I used to want, uh, I want to want, I don't want anymore. Please help me want again. Well, then that's a medical problem. And we have medical solutions. Uh, we have psychosocial solutions too. And we really care about that. And we want to you know, work really hard to figure out what's going on with you. And we do see a lot of uh, pelvic pain, bladder pain, especially as you get into menopause, all these new things can pop up um, and nobody warns you about it. No one has to talk with you before menopause. And so it can seem incredibly uh, scary. I so, another, so too. another thing that I hear out from ladies of a certain age is painful sex and what can be done about that. Yeah. So uh, similar, actually, it's very similar story. So if you're over the age, you said you're, you're most of the people listening are over are sort of in this menopausal uh, age group. And so uh, for anyone in menopause, and this one of the very easy way to think about this, um, if you've ever changed the diaper of a baby girl, okay, I have a five-year-old, you know, a baby girl, they're little tiny uh, bladders, they pee all the time, right? Uh, it, when they're diaper, they're not, they're out of diapers yet. They're, un they have uncontrolled uh, urine, their vulvas are raw, irritated, red. It's teeny tiny, right? There's not, that's not a sexual place. That is no hormones. Babies have zero estrogen, zero testosterone in their bodies. Then you go through puberty and you get a surge of hormones and the vulva literally tr ch changes. It grows into an adult vulva. It, you grow labia, you grow an opening that is pink and lubricates uh, and that tampons can go in and penises can go in if you want them to and babies can come out of. That's the what the hormones do. This tissue is so hormonally sensitive. And then at the late 30s, early 40s, testosterone starts to drop, then periods stop completely, usually around 52. And without hormones, that tissue goes backwards. It goes in reverse and it becomes back to that thin, raw, irritated, leakage, uh, pain, dryness, discomfort. No longer are tampons comfortable. No longer can you have penetrative sex. And it's so treatable. Uh, remember that estradiol, 10 microgram tablets, one daily for two weeks and then twice a week forever, or an estrogen cream, which can be messy. So it's not my favorite choice, but one gram of that cream every day for two weeks and then twice a week forever. Vaginal DHEA is a wonderful product that goes in daily and all of those things reestablish and get that tissue strong and healthy. Um, and then sometimes you will need some rehab, right? Those muscles are not used to being in pain. Just like chef, you don't put your hand on a hot stove, right? Because you're going to pull away immediately. Oh, you've done it before. You know what? <laughs> Yesterday I actually did. And what did your body do immediately, right? Ouch. Your body immediately pushes away. And so what happens is when you have pain in your vulva and it hurts, your muscles that surround the opening, they clench up and they tighten and they say, don't do this. Like, don't try to have, we know you love your partner, but don't try to do this. We know it's going to hurt for days. And so sometimes you have to rehab those muscles once you get the tissue strong and healthy. So those are the most common. Of course, lubricant is wonderful and important. Actually, we often tell people just get that coconut oil that you cook with, take some separate, uh, put it in the bedroom. Coconut oil can be a great lubricant. Um, moisturizers can be very helpful for women, but those are, those are band-aids that you use on top of, you know, sort of fixing the problem, which is very safe and effective uh, local hormones. And so I know I'm becoming a broken record, um, but I think so many women are afraid for no reason because there's literally no harm. There is no harm at all. Um, we've got tons and tons of data to show no harm and to show tons of benefit. And so it's really important because 
happens, what happens, Chef AJ, is that women aren't doing the basic foundational things like vaginal hormones. So then they're trying their d and they're trying their aloe vera pills and they're trying these diet changes, but they don't have the fundamentally healthy tissue to work with. And so all those other treatments, while they might work if you have healthy tissue, don't work as well if your tissue is very diseased. Does that, does that make sense? Absolutely. Again, getting to the root. We actually have a question about male sexual health it or not. Yeah, I sent in by Trish for her male friend. And she wonders if it's true that erectile dysfunction is strongly correlated with the risk of developing dementia in later life. And if so, is it true for SSRI induced erectile dysfunction? Wow. She's got a good question. She better sign up for my newsletter because she'll like the stuff that I put out on social media. So um, that's a loaded question. Uh, erectile dysfunction is actually a really important marker for overall health, because if you are not getting blood flow to your penis, you're probably not getting blood flow to other places as well. The arteries to the penis are quite small, one millimeter compared to the heart arteries, which are three millimeters. So if you're clogging up the one millimeter arteries, the three millimeter arteries are probably going to clog later, but not too much later. So we do worry about heart attacks significantly in a guy with erectile dysfunction. And to your point about dementia, especially a vascular dementia, if you have problem getting enough blood flow to your brain, well, that certainly could be an issue as well. And so what's good for your heart, what's good for your brain, what's good for your health is good for the penis. It's good for sexual health. And so we love, you know, eating right, sleeping right, exercising, you know, making sure uh, that you're, you're no, you don't have high cholesterol and things like that. Now, medications, and this goes for women, men, anybody, medications can affect sexual function. And so certainly antidepressants, anyone who has taken an antidepressant uh, is aware that it can affect your libido. It can also affect your ability to orgasm. And so there are certain ones that tend to be better than others, um, but certainly we can see antidepressants for all genders causing significant sexual side effects. And so we, we work together with you because if you're depressed, or anxious, you don't always have good sexual function either. So you have to find the right cocktail and the pun is definitely intended there. Uh, you have to find the right cocktail that works for you and your partner that makes sense. And so there's lots of different things that we can do to help, but it's not a one size fits all. And that's what's really important is you should care about these issues. Your doctor should care about these issues. They matter. These quality of life issues really matter. Um, but too often doctors are focused on you know, other things and not focused on the quality of life issues.